Hey everybody, this is Way to Fail here with more Kerbal Space Program Career Mode in Point Two Two, where today I'm doing a mission that is going to be a little more ambitious, you could say, not maybe as ambitious as the last time, but I'm sending out two probes and a moon lander in the same mission, and today it's going to be Bob Kerman flying around. Now I want to show you all first here, I did make some action groups for the uh, different experiments. Don't forget that you can do that for science instead of having to click everything on there. But this ship has two probe cores and one command pod. Those probes are going to be launching separately as Bob is already kind of freaking out here. Bob, more of a thinker than a pilot, but it's his turn to fly. So there we go. It's a beautiful, beautiful night above the Kerbal Space Center as I am doing just a little bit of science here. Once again, you can use hotkeys with the custom groups there instead of me having to click all the time. But there's the gravity turn. Pretty simple. Like I said, those two probe cores are going to be flying out. One is going to be orbiting the moon and one is going to be orbiting Minmus. And part of the reason I'm doing this is kind of a house rule for this run or series is that I cannot go to a celestial body far out in the distance until I send something unmanned out there first. So while I do have the parts to say go to Jewel, do a bunch of landings, fly across every moon, even without nuclear engines at this point, it's, it takes a lot of fuel, but I can do it. Um, it's inefficient as hell, but I can do it. The thing is, is that it's it just feels a little gamey to try and do that, and I'd rather have a little bit of progression here. So the idea is that I'm going to be getting into orbit. You can see I still need about a thousand delta V, and this is where I start to maybe wonder and worry just a little bit. As we are looking in time acceleration, and my face is kind of similar to Bob Kerman's here. Not so much because I'm worried about him flying or not flying. It's because I really thought that first stage, that asparagus staging, which I probably could perfect a little more, um, uh, would last a little longer there. I wasn't expecting to have to burn these engines all the way or all the way there. And you can see that I don't have any fuel lines available. Now I can pass through fuel because there those struts even are cross feed capable, but at this point uh, I actually detach the different things there and you could say, damn it Bob, that's not great. But look at what happens when I detach here. This ship is horribly this probe, I apparently am not doing good, or I'm building Kerbal style here, as I'm just trying to incline the orbit. This is going to be the Menmus probe, but look at the nav ball there. Because I have science experiments both tucked on one side there, because it balanced the original ship, I have to really finagle and see if I can get this to work, or get this to work. You can see the same here. This is the moon probe as well. I'm not being able to do a full burn on here, but I'm just trying to get this together so that I can get these things to actually go, but I everything's constantly pulling to the left side of the ship or the non-science probe side there. So while it does have the decoupler still on it, it's not entirely alive. And maybe it'd be nice if I could jettison the science experiments, but at least in my mind and my brain a little bit, the idea is that, look, even, even though science doesn't exactly work that way in Kerbal Space Program, you can see just how far off the nav ball I am. It's kind of disgusting to watch this again. Um, and you can see this regular ship works fine, but I do have some science things on the on the different boats. My orbit is really out of whack right there, out of incline at this point, so that's one reason the moon encounters are not looking very happy. But yeah, I just want to be able to have some little probe monitor things going around planets, so the Minmus, run, or Minmus and the moon here are kind of going to be test runs for what I do later. Like when I send something to Ike, or excuse me, when I send something to Duna, I want to put something around Ike. When I send something to Eve, I want to put something around uh, Gilly. And that's going to be probes first. And the next video that's going to be coming up is going to be me having to, or when I start to shoot those things off in the interplanetary space, I'm going to try and do them all around the same time because there's a window that opens up early in the game if you look at the different calculators online around 35 to 45 to 55 days you can get to all of the planets pretty efficiently of course I'd love to have nuclear rockets for that but I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to tech up the tree that far with that but if I can at least get probes out first that should be enough to do something so circularizing my probes orbit around the moon once again you can see how much of a pain in the ass this is I have to do 400 Delta V worth of fighting the nav ball because I am a terrible builder of ships I am no uh, good person architect I'm not even sure what you call a shipbuilder other than a shipbuilder but there is the sun setting there is Kerbal up in space and at least I have an orbit that counts for something I think and I try and just bring the orbit in pretty tight here not super tight it doesn't have to be super tight here but there we go one orbit and that's just gonna be some transmittal here 
because this thing's not coming back. Uh, once upon a time when I was reading about the updates first, I thought you'd be able to send out probes to get unlimited science on your ships, but that is not really the case. As you can see, another little speck or dot in the background there, we've now switched to my lander, and you can see I've passed by the probe now. And now this is the lander ship going down, and we are actually going to be having a moon landing. Now the question is, I don't want to land on the dark side because that's really irritating and hard to see. So I'm going to actually orbit a little bit, do an EVA, see if I can get on the light side of the moon and try and do that because this is going to be a land and return mission. And if you haven't already been able to see or if you didn't catch from last video, there are different regions on the moon. So you want to do different EVAs, different soil samples and stuff around there. But for now, we're going to be watching this live time as Bob Kerman is going to have to slow down quite a bit. Now, in prior experiences with moon landings, people say try and land in the craters. To me, the craters are irritating because they're bowl-shaped, so it's hard to actually find a flat surface on the crater. So what Bob is doing here following the flight profile, burning a lot of fuel to do it with the tiny rocket, but it's the most efficient fuel he has, is just to try and land on some of the flatlands between the craters. So things are slowing down ever so fast. Bob freaking out. I mean, all you got to do is fly, Bob. It's okay, but I am currently up well above sea level. It could be about 2,000 meters above. I'm not on mountains, but this is kind of a plateau that I'm landing on here, but things are going, slowing down. I should be able to slow down before I hit that next crater, but just trying to tweak things there. One of the harder parts of doing this is actually getting the, because the moon has higher gravity and no atmosphere, you really have to nail the landing straight up and down. It's not like Minmus or say Gilly where if you get it kind of off, you can just use your torque to fix things and get the landing properly. On the moon, you kind of got to get it, you got to kind of nail the landing, plant properly, or your ship will fall over. So here we go. Bob is slowly, slowly, slowly descending. You want that uh, retrograde marker over the top, over the middle of that nav ball because that lets you know kind of where you're going here, but just trying to slow down my acceleration. I look in the cockpit a few times just to watch my radar to see what's going on, but right now Bob is going, going, going. He's almost about 200 meters up, and we should be able to see a shadow of the ship pretty soon. So let myself drop just a little more, and Bob, is he going to do it? Is the ship going to collapse on... Contact, it looks like the ground's flat enough. It looks like things should be going well. And Bob's not even freaking out anymore. I think the ship's going to be okay as long as I can put it in slow enough to get the landing struts going, or the landing struts not to break. So once again, I don't do too great getting the nav ball up. I'm kind of flying to the side, and I am on a bit of a slope. I was hoping to avoid the slope, but slow it down. There we go, and landing. None of the legs broke either. Bob Kerman is the first Kerbal in who knows how long to make it onto the moon. You can hear my steam snapshot there. And Bob is happy. And Bob, is he going to EVA? We have some goo here. I do have hotkeys. But what if you do group hotkeys, it also does experiments for everything and asks you to overwrite. So that's why I'm individually writing these. So let's go ahead and keep that data. That's pretty good. The fine dust is kind of getting everywhere, and you'll never be able to get the lab clean again and that's kind of the problems that they ran into in the actual moon mission but another exciting thing I've gone deep down into the tech tree enough to get ladders actual actual ladders they even have their own lights now which is pretty nice and I also have some lights here just to light the way here on the ground because what says uh, people coming in to conquer or claim the land from another place quite like turning on the lights down there get another shot there I like seeing uh, the planet up above in the sky but there we go EVA report from Bob space just above the moon's midlands and I can keep that EVA report and take it back in or we can just go back down as he drops I'm not too great with my EVAs and I'm not too great with my rocket pack but if you do right click on him you can see just how much uh, fuel he has left but there we go. Bob Kerman is on the ground, and he is smiling. He is cheesing. He is happy. This is this is why he wants to be here. He doesn't like the flying part, but afterwards it's all good. So let's plant that flag and hop here. Not quite like uh, Jebediah's Superman hop on Minmus, but still 
plenty less gravity to work with here, so I'm going to overwrite an EVA report because I forgot to submit it here. So from the moon midlands, uh, suddenly you feel very small. Well, that's true because that is a whole planet that is just kind of hanging in the sky there and bas uh, basaltic rocks. That's kind of the actual makeup of the moon in real life. So now just happy times and let's go ahead and if I can just get this right, plant the flag. There we go. And kaboosh. There we go. Gotta love that automated kind of flag flapping system. Not even exactly sure why it's floating in the wind here because, well, the moon does have solar winds, so that's not entirely out of the question. But the site name is Carbon the Moon, just a dark sphere overhead. As Bob is very excited, very astute, and there we go. He is back on his uh he's just able to look around he can get back on his ship and, and then it's going to be time to see if he can return home and take all of the science with him for glory and excitement and that is one happy kerbal usually they're smiling that big when they're about to crash well maybe not bob but nice view of the milky way galaxy it's possible in the future we'll be getting interstellar flight the developers have said they want to do that it's just a matter of how much but that's where bob kerman is on the moon and now it's time to transition to the other part of the mission, which is a moon probe here. So if I could actually get to that, and for some reason I didn't. But yeah, there is the Minmus probe that is still flying. So like I said, three simultaneous missions. Pretty nice. As Bob's just going to be going right back in here, and it's going to be time for him to start to return home. He may be able oh, got to use that RCS to try and get up. It's not like Minmus where you can just float up. Grab, grab. There we go. Hop and board. So he does return some science and now he's back on the boat. Plenty of stored data available just doing a quick run through to check this. So that'll be good on return and you don't want to transmit because you do get some decay here so keeping all the data and Bob does his pre-flight checks and realizes oh shit look at how much fuel is there. Not even 50 units of liquid oxidizer Bob may be in trouble. We're going to go get back to Bob in just a minute. And first we're going to go to the Minmus lander here. Because Bob doesn't need to return right away. And the Minmus lander does have, or not lander, but probe does have a lot of fuel. And because somebody didn't transfer all of the fuel over to just enough here, or I possibly could have launched this from the moon, that's extra fuel that uh, Bob could probably really need right now. But instead... Just a quick encounter here. You've already seen me land on Minmus, so this isn't anything terribly controversial. But once again, this is an irritating thing to fly. I'm going to have to redesign these the next thing you go. As you can actually see the moon and uh, Kerbin right there in the shot with Minmus. They both look incredibly small. But yeah, just a quick orbit here doing a final maneuver. Not doing a full burn here, but fortunately it does not take as much to get into the sphere of influence. It's actually going to be flying over the flag site where Jebediah landed before. But there we go. You can also see the orbit is in the opposite direction here. So this is, I guess, what you could call a uh, counter or a clockwise orbit instead of a counterclockwise orbit, whatever that means. But yeah, there's the flag site. Boom, first landing. And there is Bob. Bob has confirmed that unfortunately he does not have enough fuel to survive. Well, he doesn't have enough fuel to make it back to Kerm. Unfortunately, there are life support systems. And so the next plans for the Kerbal space mission here is pretty simple. Bob is going to need a rescue and if he ends up dying on the moon that could be the end of the Kerbal Space Program before it even starts. So next episode some brave soul is going to go and see if they can save the day on the moon. But this is way to fail. That's it for now. See you all next time with, the, with a rescue mission.